afternoon, second graders. Today is Tuesday, and yesterday, when we were um, together, we read chapter two from Little House in the Big Woods. As we were reading the first part of this chapter, we came across something that many of you may not know exactly what that is, and those are paper dolls. It said that mom would sometimes um, draw and cut out paper dolls for the girls, and most um, most second graders today have never seen paper dolls or played with them. So I'm gonna show you what some paper dolls are as promised. So here we have um, a, little, a little paper, okay, drawn out and cut out, little girl. She's kind of got some of her underclothes on, I guess, like an undershirt and some little shorts. And then with paper dolls, you would have like a dress. And see how it has these tabs right here. What happens is you fold the tabs back around the little girl and then the dress stays on and you can play dolls with her, okay? So this is one, I have several of them. I have this little sweet thing. She's got her pajamas on and she's got her little bunny slippers. And then I have one that's in a set of play clothes, okay? And then here's one, looks a little bit like um, Little Red Riding Hood. In fact, she has a little hood that she could put on that we would put around her, okay? So that she would be like a little girl that was going out someplace, okay? So you might have a couple of dolls and then a whole bunch of different dresses and um, or play clothes and stuff that they would go out and they would play with. And the reason why paper dolls were invented was that, you know, people were, uh, did not have much money at all. And so they could not afford dolls for the kids um, very often. And if you were lucky, you had a doll. And so moms would make paper dolls so that the little girls would have um, several of them. Okay. Now I have some paper dolls that, um, that I have for you that um, you can download um, from RenWeb. And there is a page of girls and there's a page of little boys. And so you can print out whichever ones you want or both. And you can color them, cut them out and play with them. And so you can be like the little pioneer children um, back in the olden days when they played with their paper dolls. So today we're gonna pick up reading in, um, in Little House in the Big Woods. And we are going to actually, um, I have one last day here where we're gonna share this. Remember, if you have your book, you need to follow along. Um, we should be on page 35. Now, not all of our books have the same page numbers, but page 35, um, is going to be pretty close to where you need to be, okay? And so there we go. I've made it a little bit bigger for us. Okay, all right. So we are right at the bottom of the page because at the bottom of the page um, down here, Pa had come home and he had finished chores and he had time. So he had played this game here, all right? And it was talking about how he would dress up, that he wouldn't dress up. He would make his hair look all wild and he would crawl around on all fours and or pretend like he was some sort of wild dog that was trying to get the little girls. And he would chase them all over um, the house. And, um, and so Ma says, look how big their eyes are. So she's telling him that he really shouldn't play this kind of game with them. Well, Paul looked and then he took down his fiddle. He began to play and sing. The Yankee Doodle went to town. He wore his striped trousers. He swore he couldn't see the town. There were so many houses. Laura and Mary forgot all about the Mad Dog. And there he saw some great big guns, big as a log of maple. And every time they turned them round, it took two yoke of cattle. And every time they fired them off, it took a horn of powder. It made a noise like father's gun, only a nation louder. Pa kept time with his foot. 
and Laura clapped her hands to the music when he sang, and I'll sing Yankee Doodly Doo, and I'll sing Yankee Doodle, and I'll sing Yankee Doodly Doo, and I'll sing Yankee Doodle. Well, all alone in the big woods and the snow and the cold, the little log house was warm and snug and cozy. Pa and Ma and Mary and Laura and baby Carrie were comfortable and happy there, especially at night. Then the fire was shining on the hearth. The cold and the dark and the wild beast were all shut out. Jack the Brenda Bulldog and Black Susan the cat lay blinking at the flames in the fireplace. So hearth is a word that is um, boxed in here. Hearth is a new word for most of you. If you're thinking about your fireplace at home, if you have one at home, it is the flat section that comes out. So you have the fire and then there's that flat section that comes out. It's usually made of brick or maybe it could be made of stone in some way. Um, and that is called the hearth. Ma sat in her rocking chair, sewing by the light of the lamp on the table. The lamp was bright and shiny. There was salt in the bottom of its glass bowl with the kerosene to keep the kerosene from exploding. And there were bits of red flannel among the salt to make it pretty. It was pretty. Laura loved to look at the lamp with its glass chimney so clean and sparkling its yellow flame burning so steadily, and its bowl of clear kerosene colored red by the bits of flannel. She loved to look at the fire in the fireplace, flickering, which is like, kind of like fluttering, and changing all the time, burning yellow and red and sometimes green above the logs and hovering blue over the golden and ruby coals covering, which means kind of hanging over. And then Pa told stories. When Laura and Mary begged him for a story, he would take them on his knees and tickle their faces with his long whiskers until they laughed aloud. His eyes were blue and merry. One night, Pa looked at Black Susan, stretching herself before the fire and running her claws out and in. And he said, do you know that a panther is a cat? A great big wild cat? No, said Laura. Well, it is, said Pa. Just imagine Black Susan, bigger than Jack and fiercer than Jack when he growls. Then he would be just like a panther. He settled Laura and Mary more comfortably on his knees and he said, I'll tell you about Grandpa and the panther. Your grandpa? Laura asked. No, Laura, your grandpa, my father. Oh, Laura said, and she wriggled closer against Pa's arm. She knew her grandpa. He lived far away in the big woods in a big log house. And Pa began the story of Grandpa and the Panther. Your grandpa went to town one day and was late starting home. It was dark when he came riding his horse through the big woods, so dark that he could hardly see the road. And while he heard a panther scream, he was frightened, for he had no gun. How does a panther scream? Laura asked. Like a woman, said Pa, like this. Ah! Then he screamed so that Laura and Mary shivered with terror. Ma jumped in her chair and said, Mercy, Charles. But Laura and Mary loved to be scared like that. The horse with Grandpa on him ran fast, for it was frightened too. But it could not get away from the panther. The panther followed through the dark woods. It was a hungry panther, and it came as fast as the horse could run. It screamed now on this side of the road, and now on the other side and it was always close behind. Grandpa leaned forward in the saddle and urged the horse to run faster. The horse was running as fast as it could possibly run and still the panther screamed close behind. Then Grandpa caught a glimpse of it 
as it leaped from treetop to treetop, almost overhead. It was a huge black panther leaping through the air like Black Susan leaping on a mouse. It was many, many times bigger than Black Susan. It was so big that it leaped on Grandpa. If it leaped on Grandpa, it could kill him with its enormous slashing claws and its long, sharp teeth. Of course, we know that enormous means huge. Grandpa on his horse was running away from it just as a mouse runs from a cat. The panther did not scream anymore. Grandpa didn't see it anymore, but he knew it was coming, leaping after him in the dark woods behind him. The horse ran with all its might. At last, the horse ran up to Grandpa's house and Grandpa saw the path panther springing. Grandpa jumped off the horse against the door. He burst through the door and slammed it behind him. The panther landed on the horse's back, just where Grandpa had been. And the horse screamed terribly and ran. He was running away into the big woods with the panther riding on his back and ripping his back with its claws. But Grandpa grabbed his gun from the wall and got to the window just in time to shoot the panther dead. Grandpa said, he would never again go into the big woods without his gun. When Pa told this story, Laura and Mary shivered and snuggled closer to him. They were safe and snug on his knees with his strong arms around him. They liked to be there before the warm fire with Black Susan purring on the hearth and good dog Jack stretched out beside her. When they heard the wolf howl, Jack's head lifted and the hairs rose stiff along his back. But Laura and Mary listened to that lonely sound in the dark and the cold of the big woods, and they were not afraid. They were cozy and comfortable in their little house made of logs, with the snow drifted around it and the wind crying because it could not get in by the fire. And that's the end of chapter two. Okay. All right. So what I want to talk about next is that I want to go over a little bit to remind you some about finding um, answers. If you were to um, need to find answers in your book, some things that you would need to do to help you as you do this. Okay. So there are two things that will help you find answers when you have a lot of text, especially with it's a text like from a book, okay? So the first thing is pictures. Pictures in the book can help you look um, to see if what your question is asking, if the answer might be on that page, okay? So I've gone back to the very beginning of chapter two. And I'm going to tell you a question. I have some questions that we're going to answer real quickly. So the first question is, what chores did Laura and Mary do each day? Now, in your mind, you might think you remember, but it's not a good idea not to check it out. So I'm going to think. I think I remember some pages that had some pictures of Laura and Mary doing some chores. So I'm going to flip through my book. And I'm going to look, well, there's Pa out doing his stuff. Oh, there it is, right here. Laura and Mary seem to be working, okay? So I'm going to see. I'm going to look for um, something on this page that would help me to know where to read. And so the next thing that helps is called skimming, okay? So I'm going to skim, and I'm going to look for something like chore or work. And so I'm going to go up to the beginning and I'm just not, I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to look really fast and I'm going to look for, oh, there's work right there. I bet the answer is right here. So this is where I'm going to read. Let's read it together. Laura and Mary helped Ma with the work. Every morning there were dishes to wipe. Mary wiped more of them than Laura 
because she was bigger, but Laura always wiped carefully her own little cup and plate. Now we said yesterday when we read this part, wiping dishes, we would call that washing the dishes, right? So that is one of the chores that they did. Let's keep reading because the question said what chores, not what chore. You can't just tell one, you have to tell two. So I guess you better keep reading. By the time the dishes were all wiped and set away, the trundle bed was aired. Then standing one on each side, Laura and Mary straightened the covers, tucked them in well at the foot and the sides, plumped up the pillows and put them in place. Hmm. When you're straightening the covers on your bed, what chore do you call that? Well, I call that making the bed. So I'm gonna write on my paper that the two chores that they did were washing dishes and making their bed. Now I'm gonna say it in a sentence. So I'm probably going to say something like, Mary and Laura washed the dishes and made their bed every day. Or I could say every morning, okay? So right there, I, I looked through the book until I found a page that I thought would be um, where we were, and then I skimmed. I looked very quickly for a particular word, and I looked for the word work or chore. I either looked for one of those. And as I went through, I went until I found that. Okay, so let's see what my next question is. My next question is, what did Ma let the girls do on, uh, girls bake on Saturday? Okay, so let's see. Right here, they were, um, she's talking about the work right here. And let's see if we can find some more work. So we're gonna look for about baking on Saturdays. Well, I see the word churn here. So that's not gonna be anything to do with baking. And there, look, they're still churning. So I'm gonna go to another page. And then I'm gonna quickly look, oh, there's churn again. So I bet I need to go one more page. And then, Inside of the golden little butter pads on Saturdays, right there. That's one of my words, Saturday, because it says, What did Ma let the girls bake on Saturday? Okay, so I'm gonna read here. On Saturdays, when Ma made the bread, they each had a little piece of dough to make into a little loaf. Ooh, a little loaf of bread. That was one thing they were baking. They might have a bit of cookie dough too to make some little cookies. Ah, a loaf of bread and cookies. Let me keep reading because it says, and once Laura even made a pie in her patty pan. All right, so what would I say? I would say, Ma let the girls bake a little loaf of bread, cookies, and sometimes a pie. Okay, I could add on Saturday, okay, um, but I don't have to, okay? All right, so third question. What was the name of the game that Paul played with the girls? All right, so here they're baking on Saturday. Here mom's making paper dolls. I'm gonna go to another page. Let me see what's happening here. Um, where's my little half pint of sweet cider, half drunk up? That was Laura. They climb on him. Um, I'm looking for the word game. I'm looking because it's wanting to know what game. Oh, game. He had got some game. Oh, that's like game. This kind of game is like um, um, animals that you shoot to, to kill, to eat. So that's not you. He would come home early. He would have time to play. Oh, we're getting there. One game they loved was called what? Mad Dog. That was the name of the game. So my answer to this would be, Pa played Mad Dog with the girls. Okay? So two things you're going to use when you try to find answers to questions. The first thing is you're going to look for pictures. Pictures will do a lot because sometimes you can say, oh, like when we were talking about um, looking for Saturdays, I knew this is churning. So I didn't have to read a thing on that page. I just kept going. 
okay? Because I know that Saturdays come after Thursdays when she turns, okay? And so you can look at pictures. If I asked a question about um, the story of Grandpa and the Panther, I would want to get to that part. Uh, that's that game. And I think he told the story. Ah, there it is, the story of Grandpa and the Panther. So I would look on these pages probably to find a question about that. Okay, so you're going to use pictures. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to scan. When you scan, you read very, very quickly looking for a key quest, a key word in your question. All right. What did Ma do? Let the girls bake on Saturday. And so I looked until I found the word Saturday. Um, when we were looking for what game did Pa play with the girls? Um, we looked for the word game. Now we found the game that wasn't the right one, but then we kept looking and we found the right game, okay? So use pictures, scan, okay? All right, hope you have a great day, boys and girls.